as you had mentioned, David Sokol is here with me, the chairman of MidAmerican. You, you hold many hats these days. Uh, the biggest one right now being the CEO of NetJets. I think that's right, or whatever Warren wants me to do. <laughs> right, exactly. I think there was a recent article called you the Mr. Fix-It at, at Berkshire. Okay, so let's start with, with NetJets first, though. Um, uh, as I understand it, you're spending about half your time now. You're kind of scaling back a little bit from the turnaround that we've seen uh, at, at this company since you stepped in last year. Uh, so far, uh, are you confident that you're able to grow the top line at NetJets? I mean, it's gone through so much. Yeah, I think, you know, 2008 was a huge wake-up call for many businesses, NetJets not the least. Um, but, you know, all the changes we needed to put in place, I think we finished about six months ago. Uh, I've got a tremendously talented young management team in place now. They're doing a great job. I think this year, you know, our our primary flight sh flights from share owners, people that own parts of our airplane, will be up close to 8%, uh, which is, is very positive. Net share sales probably down about one to one and a half percent for the year which is also significantly better than the last two years um, and really our only our only weak spot is on the uh, uh, we have a, a reselling company out there marquee jet uh, mm -hmm. over the last two years you know they've turned back to us uh, well with with ten recent ones uh, you know nearly sixty percent of where they are so they're shrinking substantially and uh, but other than that you know the business I think uh, is is on a, on a sound foundation going forward and, and I think our growth going forward will be solid but it'll be limited by, you know, effectively the, the gross domestic product growth of the U.S. or Europe. Were you, and also by extension, Warren Buffett, as surprised at how much NetJets was affected by the economy? No, I think, you know, one of the one of the great strengths of NetJets is the Berkshire Hathaway backing, which is if you buy a share from us, uh, if you get into financial difficulty, we guarantee to buy it back within 90 days at fair market value. You know, when the economy shifted as dramatically as it did in 2008, it, it was a real tribute to the fact that Berkshire Hathaway stood behind every one of those guarantees. We bought back uh, 53 full airplanes in total. Right. Um, and, and it cost, it ultimately cost us a fair bit of money because as the fair market value was dropping. Um, I was going to say, not at a benefit to you. No, that's right. Not we, at a benefit we, to the we've company. We've not made any money buying those airplanes. Um, but we stood behind the guarantee that was there. And, and so I think it's a, it's a real tribute to the fact. But it was also, it's why people, I think, it's why, why NetJet has 70% market share as people want to deal with Berkshire Hathaway on an investment that both is that important to them financially but also where you know Warren has always maintained the absolute top safety standards in the world for, for net jets and will always keep them there. Uh, have you been surprised though David by the um, I guess amount of criticism that has come out though from this turnaround at net jets um, you've had you know the co-founder there um, talking about uh, you know that NetJets is now stuck with an aging fleet. Um, you know how are they going to grow their top line? I mean, have you been surprised by that? I, th I have been surprised at how somebody like Mr. Jacobs and that actually goes out and criticizes a company that that he was poorly managing. Um, he, you know, he's argued that that we uh, we should have been buying more airplanes these th today this year and last year, which would be crazy. I mean, if he actually understood the business model that, that he was involved with, uh, that that was just would have been insane. They, they'd already bought too many aircraft. Secondly, he wasn't selling the older airplanes that they could have sold in 2007. So both premises of his argument, I think the reality is, um, you know, some people when 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 they realize they, they they weren't running a business well and it gets fixed, you know, they find it in their interest somehow to hurt the employees that are there trying to make the company a success. And mm -hmm. I, I don't understand it. I don't respect it at all. Um, but I, I think that's all it is. I think any any objective look at the company, the team of people, the quality of our pilots, our flight attendants, the quality of the aircraft, our owner satisfaction numbers uh, through the first half of this year were the highest they've ever been. Right. And uh, so I think the reality is the, the, those that are running it and the group of, of, of tremendous folks that do it every day are doing a great job. And well, it's unfortunate that a former executive would try to harm the very people that, that purportedly he cared for. But but I think that's well behind us. I, I don't it, think he, it, he it really is. has much influence. I, I mean, the, the, well, well, the only thing you know that, that he has said as well is just that you know that he's argued well look you know things were turning around when when you stepped in that um, you know debt was coming down at net jets um, you know what do you say to that well it was uh, last April it was a billion nine today it's about a billion 150 um, and uh, almost all of that happened with the team that's currently in place, not not the prior team. So I think I think okay. the, the numbers speak for themselves. And, and uh, again, I, I I hope that the former executives uh, you know have have a good life and move on and enjoy their life and, and let the employees that are there do what they do for our owners every day and, and let the business go forward. And you're going to step down soon as CEO. Is that correct? Right. Hopefully by the end of this year, uh, latest first quarter um, transition the CEO's title. Hopefully uh, stand up one of my six team uh, senior team members. 
today uh, to president uh, by the end of this year. Okay, so you'll make a decision by the end of this year then. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And there, we've got a great, a great young team. Uh, several of them have been with the company more than 17 years. I mean, they know the business. Uh, right. My goal here the last several months and for the next six is to really let them, uh, you know, learn every aspect of the business amongst themselves. They, they operate uh, tremendously in a team format. And I'm really excited about it. I've got them all in one location and they're doing, doing a great job. Now, you've said before, David, in our conversation before this, that you spend about half of your time right now. You've scaled back a bit. You spend about half of your time um, at NetJets. So what is the other half now spent on? Well, I'm trying to spend as much time as, as Greg Abel wants at Mid-American. You know, he doesn't need much time. He's the CEO there. He does a great job. Um, spent a small amount of time with Johns Manville and Todd Rabel, who's the CEO there. Again, a, a great team of people doing a terrific job in a very difficult market. The fact that they're profitable through this period um, is really remarkable, I think, uh, given how affected they are by the housing market. Right. And then some time on the BYD board and with activities with BYD. And then whatever's left, trying to find you know additional opportunities for Berkshire. Uh, what's the latest with BYD now that you bring it up? Because there are plans to open up the U.S. headquarters, I believe, um, sometime this year. Is that, is that correct? Uh, I, yeah, they put they made an announcement uh, earlier in the year. I think it's going to be in L.A. Okay, right, in L.A. Um, given what's happened in China, the slowdown there, BYD cut their forecast um, last week, I believe, um, you know, in China for sales. And I know you can't talk operationally about BYD, but um, is there any sense from your, you know, your being on the board at BYD and just looking at the company, um, that there's a slowdown going on and that Chinese companies are scaling back. Oh, there, there clearly is is a slowing element in the Chinese economy. You know, you're right. I think BYD has is, is lowered their, their estimated car sales in China by about 20 to 25 percent. Right, 25 percent, yeah. But that'll still be up 50 percent over the prior year. Mm. Uh, they're the fourth largest manufacturer now in China. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't read too much into that other than I think that the Chinese government is trying to appropriately throttle their, their uh, economy. Um, and that that will ripple through all of the, the various capital goods, you know, in that economy. The advantage that the Chinese have, though, is that they've got enormous numbers of levers to play with um, as they manage that economy, as they move, you know, whether it's a, an extra million people into the workforce each year or whatever, you know, they, they can have a dramatic impact. So m my suspicion, and I have no, no first-hand knowledge, is that they're trying to understand how well those levers work so that as they pull them, they can, uh, they can adjust in the future. Okay. All right, David, hang on. We're going to have you after the break to talk more, not just about China, but about your outlook on the economy as well. We're back with David Sokol, uh, chairman of Mid-American. We'll be back in just a few minutes. We are back with David Sokol. He's, among other things, the chairman of Mid-American, also the CEO of NetJets, and the chairman of Johns Manville, which is a roofing insulation company, I guess is, is how I would describe it. Um, uh, but right before the break, David, we were talking about China and uh, you know, your involvement in BYD, which is the auto and battery maker. Um, you know, you're a deal maker in many ways. Is there any sense, are you, are you seeing any more deals in China, aside from BYD? Um, you know, it, we get shown a lot of things, but just uh, from our investment perspective, and it should be pointed out, by the way, this uh, BYD is all Charlie Munger. I mean, I, I uh, had the good fortune of him calling me to ask me to go take a look at it and execute, but but it, the, the genius was his on that, and he really started following it quite some time ago. And so uh, I get I get the only credit I should get is having gone over there and, and, and helped put the deal together, but he, it was his idea. Um, but we get shown a lot of things. It's, you know, China is a difficult market because of um, if you're not Chinese, it's hard to really understand. So I think one of the benefits of BYD has been really learning a lot about how business is done mm -hmm. in China. And uh, so I, I, I'm hopeful that that will turn into future opportunities. But thus far, I think we're still in the learning mode. Are there any missed opportunities right now in the deal-making world that you're seeing? Any missed opportunities? Well, not that I'm aware of, because we'd be making them if there were. Um, um, but, you know, there's a lot going on right now. Well, it, well, let me ask it this way. Is there anything preventing you from pulling the trigger on more deals in the businesses that you're in? Just just the opportunities. You know, if, if, if we thought the opportunity was there, I mean, we've got a few things we're working on, and, and, and always that is always the case. But, you know, the price has to make sense. The risk has to make sense. I, I think we're getting to where um, more opportunity is going to take place, because I think people are getting... Um, beginning to recognize that we're in a slower growth environment for probably the next five years, both in the U.S. and in Europe. And, and I think that will bring down expectations, um, uh, and, and hopefully we can find some good things to do. Uh Talking just a bigger picture on the outlook then, you know, a lot of people have said, look, just as the business cycle was turning around, now it appears that we're seeing another marked slowdown in the economy. Uh, how does that translate for you then? 
I, I think what's happening is, is really very consistent with where, where I've kind of seen things seem to feel like they're going, which is you look at the magnitude of the bubble that we build up in, in leverage, if you will, it's homeowner leverage, banks and financial institutions or state, local and federal government uh, that fed on the same housing bubble by raising property taxes constantly and spending those revenues without thinking about what if it breaks. Right. You know, that's a massive amount of money and, and, and value that's been lost. And it's different than you know, somebody had a $250,000 house that five years later they thought it was worth seven fifty, dollars but today it's only worth three fifty. dollars Well, if that were the case, they still have $100,000 more than they thought. The, the real case is somebody had two fifty, dollars it went to six fifty. dollars they borrowed five fifty dollars against it, bought a boat, uh, bought a refrigerator, took two vacations, some jewelry, whatever, and, look at where and they now are. it's worth yeah. three hundred. dollars mm -hmm. So they have a real hole to dig out of, and that's true at state, local, and federal levels, as well as the homeowner, as well as a number of financial institutions. So, you know, I, my guess is if five years from now we look back and we see the U.S. has grown a 2% GDP level through that annually, Europe maybe a half a percent, and Asia maybe 65 to 7.5%, I think we'll look back at that and say that's pretty good. Um, if we've also solve some of these leverage problems. So, um, but just quickly, yes or no, you're hiring now though, or? If demand calls for us to hire, we're hiring. Okay. Um, but, but, but there isn't too many locations where that's the case. Okay. David, thank you very much for, uh, for stopping by and for joining me. Glad to be uh, here. here. That was uh, David Sokol, the chairman of MidAmerican.